Hello there and welcome to my arty corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter and amongst other things I love to create art, I love to draw, I love patterns and I was a science teacher for 28 years which means I really enjoy helping people to discover their talents and their, their abilities. And while I was a science teacher I also did teach some art so you know have, have some experience in that but I believe that we're all artists. To be human is to be creative and it's just finding out how to express that creativity in life. And um, everybody does it in a different way, but sometimes we need a bit of a guiding hand and help, especially if we believe that we can't draw. So, with no further ado, let's get on today. today. This is my sort of first successful attempt at this particular pattern. I was asked by Hang on, let me move my camera back a little bit. That's a bit better. This is where I, I'm more comfortable drawing. Um, by Mr. Keith Chen, who's one of my subscribers here. And he said, how can you draw this? I've tried and I can't get it right. And I've tried, I tried three times, I think it was. Was it three times? Three times in my sketchbook until I figured out the way to do this and this one is most probably my most successful it looks terribly complicated doesn't it now my instincts were as I'm sure yours would be is going oh look these these shapes here this is where I start no no that's not where we start so let's get into this okay um where we start is actually let me feel the, this paper side this side will do we're going to start by drawing a shape that goes it's a a kind of s shape you don't need to be too particular about it but we want to join one side to the other not to corner to corner i don't think i think i prefer it but you can if you wish it makes no difference at all and then we're going to repeat this kind of shape except we're going to have a wider gap on the outside and we're going to get the, the lines to become narrow towards the centre and then flare back out. So a little wider, narrower and flare out. And turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Wider comes back narrower and then we'll start to flare that out narrower and flare it out I've most probably exaggerated this a bit okay and I'm going to keep on doing this on each side until I'm ready to start to have like here a loop coming back so I want a loop coming back here but I'm not going to join it up. What I am going to do is I'm going to draw another line from here. But I want it to connect with this and go inwards like so. And I'm going to put a teardrop on the end. You could put a circle. In fact, let's do that. Let's put just a simple circle on there. Or a shape that sort of mimics this loop here so that would work like so and then I'm going to start close here and I'm going to aura and allow this to get a little bit wider and as it widens at the end it's going to do what it wants to in order to fill this space in and I'm going to call that one done, that side done. And already we can see these lines beginning to appear like they're going inside and going somewhere. Now then, for the other side, we've started here and gone around here so this is the way we're going to go here but I'm not ready to I could introduce 
one of these actually. Let's have a look and see because this will be new to me. So here I just want to... Hmm. No, I shouldn't have. I should have done a couple more, but we'll, we'll work with this and see what happens. So I'm going to introduce this shape and I'm going to leave that gap. So I'm curling round, but not quite joining up, leaving a gap, starting wider at the bottom here. And then I'm going to draw a line that goes around. goes around and back up perhaps and we'll have that just joining there. I think I actually want to have that a little bit of a different shape. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, have I mucked this up now? I'll leave that. I've got a I've got quite rough paper here and I've got a Pigma Sensei pen that is the nib's nearly on its way out. Okay, now we're okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start close to this. I'm going to flare that out. I've got an awkward space here, I'm not happy about that. And I'm going to do exactly the same as I did on the other side. Like so. And here. Just get my thicker pen. I've got um, a flexible nib pen. This is a, a Zig Mangaka flexible pen. And I think what I might do here is I'm going to make this a whomping great big black blob. Because it seems about the only thing I can do to kind of make this feel right. I don't know. I must probably completely mess this up now. And I'm going to do the same on this side where I am. Creating a shape that is more like the outside one. Yeah, they're big and they're bold. And I can live with big and bold. So we've got those there defining this space. Now for these, this would actually be one of the, the, the black bands. So I'm just going to, instead of having a thin line at the bottom, I'm going to start to um, just thicken that there. But I'm not quite sure how this is going to work out around here. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean now in a moment. So I've done that one. So if I start with this, for this one, this is going to be left empty. So the next one out is where we're going to add black. And because I've got a really ridiculous shape here, it's going to take me a little while to fill in, even with my flexible nib pen that gives me... Um, I am keep moving towards myself, I'm sorry. It gives me a broader line. It's still going to take me a little while to fill this in because I could do with an even broader pen than this. But, you know, I won't bore you with it all, but we can start to fill this in. And then I think the trickiest part is actually filling, working out the patterns. And I think for this, we do need to start from around these rather than from the middle out. I've really made a mess of this one, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, done that. I'm still learning. I've done quite a few um, this morning trying to work this one out. It's deceptively difficult, deceptively easy, but there's some trickinesses in, in it as well that need to be considered. Part of me just wants to cut this off and I think that might actually work. I may do that. It's 
So I'm just going to work my way across here, hopefully. That's more or less done. So we'll miss a band and we'll fill in a band. And hopefully we won't need any finagling of patterns on the other side when I get there. I'm turning my paper around because for this I prefer to push this pen away from me. Which is just what I'm doing here. And this is my piece of good advice for today. If you've got large areas to fill in with black or any colour, invest in a broad pointed pen or an, a pen that has a nib that can become different thicknesses, you know. It saves so much time and effort and it saves the nib of your finer pens. I do tend to draw on a bigger scale than say they do for Zentangle. Um, I only ever use a 0.1 pen for fine details in my drawings. Um, sometimes fine contour lines and so on. But I do have a tendency to draw big and bold. Or big and bigger and bolder. My usual go-to size of pen for drawing is actually um, an 05, sometimes no 08 or 07. Now I've got an issue here because I've got two two sections here together and I need them to be I need a black one in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thicken this particular line. I've got enough space to do that. And I can bring that around here and just and there we are. We've got oh gosh, as I move the paper with the nib still down, not a sensible idea. But there we are, we've got a, sh a space that is broader again. The fact that it's not as thick as the other ones is fine. We're not looking for perfection in this. It's hand-drawn. If you wanted perfection in the, the shapes of these, you'd have to use something like French curves to draw the lines perfectly and goodness knows what. We're not looking for that. What I can do here though, I think I can increase the, the line weight just here a little bit perhaps work on bringing this to, to have a better kind of there there we go that's a bit better a bit messy there and perhaps here I can adjust this then just to take that into account so that's beginning to work and then these ones on this side are going to work perfectly because we're not worried about anything you know um butting up to one another or whatever. This one here does need to become that little bit wider at the base in both areas, so we can just do that and that works fine. So I'll just fill in some of these quickly. And of course, you know, black, the black and, um, in this case, it's sand, sand colored Fabriano tone paper. The black and the plain colour will actually work really beautifully with this, just as it is, but you can enhance this with some shading, which I'm going to do. But we need to fill in some of the black first. Having said that, it works nicely like this, and we could just, um, instead of filling in the large areas, we could create lines that get thicker towards the end um, like a lot of Zentangle style patterns do. If you think about um, is it Senna and Pepper and similar patterns to that those are the ones that come to mind but uh, this is 
certainly our part um, from way back. And I do have a bit of a passion for our part. I do have to say that. There is something lovely about our part. I love, and it features in my, uh, not our part itself, but that desire to create the feeling of dimension in your artwork is very much with me and the high contrast to achieve that. It is something that I love, the warping of space, imaginary. I think it comes from my love of things like, you know, I grew up in the 1960s, 70s, into the 80s, so things like this were all around. And um, I also grew up with a, an older sister who is very artistic, not in the same way as me, in her own way, but with books or images from um, Escher, um, so many other things around. And I just, apps, you know, those, those influences you're exposed to, I think, as a child or as a young person stay with you through life. And things like, I don't know where the William, love of William Morris has come from and the arts and crafts. Actually, I do. And that, I think, has come from a lot of time spent at Castell Coch, the Red Castle, um, not too far from where I live. And as a child, we used to spend, go down there on Sunday afternoons to explore the, the castle and the grounds. And back in the day, it was free entry. Um, now it's managed by Cadu, which is the Welsh equivalent of English heritage or Scottish heritage. And um, there is an entry fee, unless you remember. I haven't been there for a long time, mind you. But it's a wonderful place. It's like a fairy tale castle. It's a Victorian folly of what a medieval castle should have been or medieval life was, which it never was. It is built on the foundations of a, a, a castle from that back that time, a smallish castle or house of some kind, fortified house or manor. But by um, the architect and artist, William Burgess did all the designs and plans. And he was um, one of the arts and crafts movement with, the William Morris, with William Morris and so on. So that's where that comes from. Medieval manuscripts, who knows? Most probably from the arts and crafts because they were very much inspired by medieval manuscripts and things of the past, Gothic architecture and so on in nature. So I guess that's where it all comes from. So this is basically the pattern that um, the person known on here as Keith Chen asked. And I am going to just slice a bit off because that will make me feel happier because I can do that. So nothing says you can't do that. So that feels a bit better. That does feel a lot better, actually. And um, I am going to add some shading into some sections. So I hope this made sense. Please let me know that it did. It's the most difficult part is getting these areas and then working out when to spiral this around. I don't think you can go wrong, though, in many ways. I don't think so. OK, let's head for, I was going to use graphite pencils, but I think I'll use, let me have a look, I'm looking for a madder brown, I think. Got that. OK, come on. Where are you? Where are you hiding? I don't want ink black. Don't want dark chocolate. Oh, typical, isn't it? Yesterday, in the video I did yesterday, all the colours I wanted just popped out at me. Ah, oh, there we are, Madder Brown. Just popped out at me. They were just there today. Not so, but, you know. So I'm just going to put some Madder Brown where these start to disappear underneath this section like so 
and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Because I think this addition of shadow here will really help. Already you can see it does with just that little hint of this shading going on here. Now this is going to be tricksy, but if I'm adding colour to all of this, in all of these sections, it will all look very much the same. So I've picked a water brush up that is insisting on flooding water out. But if we drag this out and even that little bit of extra colour will, as it dries, it will fade. So we'll be fine. And that is the point. It will fade as it dries. And the water, I could have left it without any water on. The water activates the beautiful colour of this madder brown. I will take that away and I will just bring this around just that little bit. Already, the difference that makes, just that little hint of colour. And I'm not spending a lot of time doing this. You could do this with graphite, you could do this with chalk pastels, you could do it with the coloured pencils or any other media you prefer to use. I'm using brown because it ties in with this sandy coloured background. And I do like that. And the paper I'm using isn't really meant for um, water, but I'm using it today. It's... it's um, the Fabriano tone paper is 15% cotton, so it's a bit more robust than it claims to be. It will take it, but you can see how it's warped. I've got that going on there. And do you know what? I think I might just pop some of this colour here at the edges. Because these do look like they are bending downwards, don't they, and away from us. So I think I might just play with that idea by putting some of the, the colour at the base and just bringing it up. Have a look here. I think that'll work in here. Let's have a look and see how that works with this. I think it will work fine. Again, just want to blend the colour out but keep it fairly dark towards one end. So I want that gradient going on here. And yes, I'm using the back of my hand to clean my brush off on. Because uh, remembering to get kitchen roll just doesn't happen. But it washes off my skin, so it's okay. Permanent on paper washes off skin. Don't get it on your clothes though when it's wet, the ink tents, because it will stain. I've actually used it to dye paper. There's a bit here that I want some in, miss that bit out. There we go, just very quickly. Now, though I've done this across a whole of a square piece of paper, this pattern would fit into any shape that you wish. And I've created this quite on the, you know, on the large side. Because um, for the ease of what you can see, uh, of the ease of you seeing what happens, but also because I just love this big bold design, this big bold pattern really. There we go, so we've got that spread out and then it's just a question of activating all of this and I might need to blend a little bit more out just to get that smooth gradient going, but we can do that. I love the colours when they're wet. It's a shame they don't remain that colour as they dry. So while that's drying, I'm just going to pop these to one side because I don't need those anymore. Okay. And I did want to look for a, there it is. I have got a white charcoal pencil. And I'm going to give it a quick 
sharpen here or a little bit of a sharpen. I want to find a cleanish tortillon that I can use. Uh, that'll do, it's got some brown on it but it'll work. Because I do want to put some, because I'm working on toned paper, I can put some highlights where I, where I think these will have curved to their highest extent here. So a little bit away from the colour I've just added. Okay, let me have a look. Um, I'm just going to gently buff this out. We may need to add some more, but I can go. You can always add more. You can't. It's not easy to take away. So that actually is working quite nicely. So I'm going to put some more in the highest point of these. I wasn't very generous on this side in here so I'm going to add a bit more I do want it to blend down on either side I don't want a solid white band I would like it just to blend and unfortunately I've got some of this on my black is not ideal as far as I'm concerned. I am going to put some white here. If I was a bit ca more careful with the tortillon, we would get less on the black. But it is what it is. I do want some white down here. I use that saying an awful lot, don't I? It is what it is. And I think that's a good attitude to have. Um, this isn't necessarily a complete, you know, work of art. It will end up in my sketchbook, don't get me wrong. And um, I've now done this a few times, so I've worked out how I do it. And that memory of how I create this will be there, though I might make a note in the sketchbook next to it about starting with this central bridge and working from there because that does make some kind of sense and said it don't give up the first time you do it try again and again and again and this is what sketchbooks are perfect for because they they're spaces where you can practice if you haven't got a sketchbook just use some printer paper or any kind of paper available to you and just draw it again and again and again you know, don't spend time colouring all the black areas in because, um, you know, that will come. But just practice, practice, practice. You know, I, I did four versions in my sketchbook. I think I did five on tiles. And I'll show you them all. And it took me a while to figure this one out. But I got there. And if it's taken me, what, 10, 11 goes, which I haven't shown you all of, because that would be very tedious and very boring, then just don't give up the first time. I know I get frustrated with myself when I've got patterns to try and I just can't get them the way they are sort of like kind of done and officially done, if it's a Zentangle pattern and so on. But I think you, it's that, it is what it is, and I'm happy with how it's worked out, is the key to this. Okay, let me see if I can just get this to lie a bit flatter just by adjusting this paper. It's still a bit wobbly, but it'll be fine. But that is the pattern that Mr. Keith Chen wanted me to have a look at. So, I have got some areas where there's white chalk on black, but it doesn't show up too much. I mean, you could put highlights on the black if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave them plain matte black and let the white areas shine against them. So, key to doing this. Start with this central region of aurid lines. When you get close enough to the edge to start a loop round, do that. 
but don't connect it because we want a line to come up and through and create this dark central area here. Then you just start ordering the sides and then highlight and shadow is what's going to bring this to life. And I just think that it will be a fun pattern to fill in spaces. Shall we have a go at that? Shall we? Shall I? Why not? Let me get another piece of paper. Now I'm not going to completely draw something like that. But let me have a look. Oh, yeah, there we go. We'll use this. So I am going to draw a random shape in the middle. First find the O4. And perhaps in a Pangea kind of way, but I am going to aura it like so, because then what I can do, I'm going to just close my curtain a little bit because the sun on my curtains by the side of me, because the sun is streaming in here, and I think it might be a bit bright for this even. So what I'm going to do, actually, we need some more light on. Oh, honestly, it's beautifully sunny out and I'm, I'm closing the windows, the curtains. It's fine. So what I'll do around the outside is I'll create some kind of pattern. But in here, I want to put one of these in the centre. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing where I'm going to draw... kind of S shape and then going to start wideish on one side and go narrow and then just flare out a bit. I'll do that on the other side like so and I want to create my inner beam which is what I'm doing here. For some reason I feel there needs to be an odd number of things here but ultimately I don't think it matters too much so I'm going to go around here and I think the next one on this side is going to be the one where it comes back around so let's have a look. It's going to create a big space there but we'll do that. I'm going to move that line that I've just drawn from here to connect, it's going to the middle, I've taken right to the centre and I'm just going to put that kind of line going in here and then it's almost as if these come around behind here. So it's exactly the same thing that we did, it's just that we've got an uneven border. Okay. So here I've gone round this way, so I need to start on this side. So again, I'm going to do the same. And I think this one might actually come around here. So I'm going to bring that line down towards the centre of this space. And I'm just going to put that kind of shape there. One thing I did notice when I was practicing or working this out is if you put a little kink in these somewhere, you can actually make them feel like they're undulating. So experiment with the shapes of these lines and how you make them bend and curve and see what happens. So again, we've got this kind of pattern in here, but it's slightly different because it's a different kind of thing going on. So let's have a look and see what happens when I add black to some of this. Again, I'm not going to colour it, well I say I'm not going to colour it all in. Most probably won't. Or if I do, I'll stop the camera and come back. It would make some kind of sense, wouldn't it? So let's have a look here and see what we're doing. Okay, let's 
do this. It won't take me long to complete this now. Or at least one side of it, shall we say. And a couple in the middle. So I don't want to do this one. I want to leave this one here. So I'm just going to fill this space in with black. This very graphic nature actually works wonderfully to fill in a strange shape. Now here I've got two of these together again by this thin line. But this is part of this central one which actually would also become wider towards the bottom. So I can thicken this line for this one that goes here. And also then perhaps add some extra ink in the centre there just to bring that together. So, you know, I, I, I keep count. I sometimes think, oh, we need an, odd, an even number here or an odd number there. And ultimately it doesn't matter as long as you've, you're able to think kind of creatively about how you fix things. And ultimately, nobody's going to know unless you tell them, oh, I messed up here and this is what I did to fix it. You get to see me working warts and all. Because this, it happens and we make mistakes. We, I sometimes forget to watch where my pen's going. And so my eye moves to the next thing I'm going to draw instead of focusing on where my pen is at the moment. And... My pen will go off in a random direction. I think, oh no, not again. And then I have to fix that. Now, if I'm scanning something in, um, then I can fix it digitally, so I don't need to worry. But if it's pen that's, you know, this is, this is the finished drawing, as it were, then I have to think of a creative way of altering that or hiding it, disguising it, or making it part of the overall pattern or design. And there's always things you can do. It, it is that creative thinking. And instead of going, oh, no, I've made a mistake. It's about thinking about, it's about thinking that, well, actually, this is a creative opportunity for me to learn something that could be different and interesting and something I really like. And I can adjust this to suit me. And just remember, don't point it out to people and the chances are people won't even notice. They'll think it was something that you did deliberately. I think it was Bob Ross that called them happy little accidents. I can't remember, I think it was um, one of the art teachers in the school I taught at would describe them as creative opportunities. But whichever way you look at them, it is, an, it is an opportunity to learn and to grow and to develop your art skills, your art, art repertoire, your drawing skills and repertoire a little bit more. So this one, again, I've got this area where I've got two spaces. So I'm just going to use that as an opportunity to make this a bit denser in ink so it looks like it belongs in the pattern. And there we are, we filled this area in with this shape. What I am going to do though as well is my original lines are a little bit on the, the thin side for this. I think you need chunkier lines. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to thicken the, the border, or the inside border here. And so I'm going to try and keep it a consistent thickness with this pen, but there's no hope of that. But it doesn't matter because it will look like it's supposed to be that way. Like so. And I think I may just do the same with the outer part. Again, because I'm using a flex flexible, a flexible nib flexible nib. I'm just going to allow the line to thicken and thin as it needs to and in some ways I'm actually going to make that quite deliberate as I go around while press lighter and 
softer in places to play with that idea so it looks like it's deliberately like that because it's the same all over. And of course around the outside we can do all kinds of things so I'm going to use this chunky pen to start putting things in. And for this I'm going to turn this into a flower. I must admit this pen isn't my favourite for drawing with. The flexible nib is a bit too soft for my liking and for my heavy hand. But I'll make use of it. So let's do another flower here. Do I need the same number of auras around it as on the other one? Nope, I haven't even counted them. So, same as the number of petals or the length of them, I'm just doing them as they come, as they want to flow out of my pen nib. Filling in my little spaces here and there. And so we can do another one here, so I'm going to this my nib is actually gets I put more pressure on the downstroke, so I'm naturally getting these variations in line thickness as I work with how my hand pressure moves. A bit like brush calligraphy. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to work with that as I go here and perhaps add some more of these. There are many makes of flexible brush pens now. Um, I've tried many. I keep going back to the Tombow though, but I've got a few of these in my stash so I will make use of them and use them up from time to time. Sometimes you've got to try things to work out what suits you. And um, I do go through fads and fancies where I like bold pen strokes and then when I prefer something that isn't quite so bold and But today is a bold pen day by the looks on it, and I'm fine with that. So, of course, with flexible pens, it's easy to get these line weights as well, as they're called, the thicker lines and the the ends of lines that are thick without having to go back and do them. It does take some kind of control here though. To do that. And here I'm going to just change this a little bit. So I've got something that looks like a border or a ribbon or some other thing that's appearing from underneath these flowers. Call cool, that's a wonking great big thick line there. And so I've got this opportunity here now to put a different pattern in. I think I'm going to go to something that is quite straight lined. I'm using this kind of zigzag pattern. I think it's the Zentangle pattern Shattuck. But it features in an awful lot of artwork. There are very few, well there are patterns that are being created all the time, but they're all in some way variations of a very basic kinds of patterns I think. 
And this I've seen on sort of prehistoric pottery. Yeah, sort of like in the UK, um, I think Neolithic. Could be Bronze Age, so we're going back anywhere from about, I think, 6,000 or so years ago forward. Perhaps a bit older. Of course, you see it in pottery from all around the world from prehistoric times. man's creativity and we're still using the same patterns today because there's something about them that is endearing and delightful about them spirals and circles and patterns of such things are, are as old as humanity in many ways as, well as old as humans have created art is a pretty long time ago. There were cave paintings in towards the end of the previous ice age, you know, hundred thousand years ago, is it or more? My my knowledge of dates is a bit rusty and woolly to say the least, but absolutely amazing. And I'm smiling as I think about these things because I, I'm remembering the wonder and the beauty of them made with the best tools, best knowledge, best techniques they had at the time and just how beautiful they are and honest in that. I'm not perfect, I'm not perfect by long shot, but... Just absolutely beautiful for what they are. So I've done that one just simply to show you that this pattern will fit in any shape. So this will go into any shape at all that you need to fill in. Uh, again, I've done this one really quite chunky because what, what do I do? I do chunky. What can I say? Chunky. Um, but final line work you'll get more detail into it it look less clunky I'm just in a chunky pen mood today so I hope that you've enjoyed this I hope that you'll give this pattern a go I hope I've explained it and shown the tricks that I've discovered about it and that it's one that will form a part of your repertoire in in terms of drawing and art and creativity and that it will lead to exploration of other kinds of optical art that is easy and looks complex. But as you can see, once you've worked out how to do it, you go, oh, it's that simple. These, these bits here are the ones that are fooling us. Although they could be put in, actually, as I'm looking at them. And you can put the in-between in bits in that way. But I, I just found it was a lot easier to start with this and then work out from there. It just seemed to make a lot more sense to me, but that's me. Oh, let me just turn that over. Let's have a look and see if now I've got a better grip on this, if I can actually um, see what's happening. So if I have a look at this, okay, so we're going to go down and round like so, and down and round and up and that's my inner bit there so I didn't start with the inner bit I started with the outer ones how interesting is that I'm going to bring those back there then I'm going to keep working around this perhaps starting here and going around this way Bearing in mind that I want them to be narrower there and to flare out here. This one is going to go round to about here. It's difficult to work on the edge of the paper. But there we go. We've got that central beam going on. So I'm now going to do the same on this side where I'm going to 
think about where I want my, perhaps my first ones. So that's where my first um, circle around is going to be, then the next one. So let's take that around. I want to bring it back, not so that it's cl too close to the line, but I've got enough space to get one of these in and then bring this back. These back and those back and then I'm going to just have that one going off this one really could have done we're going around that way it is a bit trickier to do it this way but it is possible let's just say that and then we can do the same thing I think I prefer to put the the, the beam down the middle in first but that would work as well You can see here so I can just pop one in there perhaps have some going around the edge there to suggest they they're sort of joined together as it were so yeah that would work there we are there's another quick way of doing it I think I just found the, the bridge idea a lot easier to work out where it's going to go and how it's going to deal so there you go so I'm going to say thank you for joining me if you've subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, especially if you got through to the end of this and you'd like to see more content of me trying things out and showing you how to do things my way, whatever those things may be, whether it's whimsical drawing, stylized drawing, patterns, you know, sort of like my doodle art kind of stuff, then please click the notification buttons and subscribe. It's completely free. And if you've enjoyed this, that it's inspired you, please give it a thumbs up. And um, comments are always welcome. Um, suggestions and helpful comments are always welcome. And um, I shall see you all again soon. Until then, take care um, and be creative. Bye-bye for now. Hoyle.